Greetings from London. Just a quick word. This series of videos on economics lessons from friends was recorded prior to Matthew Perry's passing, which was last weekend from the time that I'm recording this. Me and naturally millions of fans across the world are saddened, but just want to express condolences and prayers for friends and family who knew Matthew personally. If millions are taking it hard because this was a television character that we associated with, uh, naturally the bigger burdens on that. That said, hopefully the series provides a little bit of joy and a little bit of learning for everybody. And let's go right to the series. So, I quit. Why? 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 This was supposed to be a temp job. Yeah, Chandler, you've been there for five years. Friends is one of the most popular TV shows of all time. And within the series, a number of the characters become unemployed at various times, which gives us a good opportunity to look at the types of unemployment, how economists categorize them. Uh, if you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe. This is part of a series where I'm looking at economic lessons from the TV show Friends. And let's watch a clip where we see some of the characters and some of their employment struggles. Guess what? You got a job? <laughs> Are you kidding? I'm trained for nothing! <laughs> I was laughed at 12 interviews today. And yet you're surprisingly upbeat. Well, you would be too if you found Joan and David Boots on sale, 50% off. Oh, how well you know me. <laughs> They're my new, I don't need a job, I don't need my parents, I've got Greek Boots Boots. <laughs> How'd you pay for them? A uh, credit card. Mm -hmm. and, and who pays for that? Um, my father. <laughs> want to leave Ralph Lauren. What? I, I, I don't. You don't? No, I, I, love, I love it there. Well, if you don't want to leave, why are we having this lunch? What? It's you go, boss. No. Hey, how'd the interview go? Oh, not good. You know, I always feel that way after an interview. I'll bet it went better than you think. Well, I didn't get the job at Gucci, and I got fired from Ralph Lauren. That is a bad interview. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? How'd this happen? Well, my boss was at the same restaurant where I was having my interview, and he heard everything. So later he calls me into his office, and he tells me that he's going to have to let me go because I'm not a team player. And I say, wait a minute. No, yes, I am. And then I had to sit there for 45 minutes while he proved that that, in fact was true. Joey, you're gonna be fine. You don't need that show. It was just a dumb soap opera. Phoebe, this was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Yes, I was going to incorporate that. <laughs> oh, good. Here's Monica. She'll have something nice to say. Um, I straightened out your shower curtain so you won't get mildew. <laughs> what? To me, that's nice. It's gonna be okay. You know that. No. I don't. It's like, you know, you work your whole life for something, and you think that when you get it, it's never going to be as good as you thought it would be. But this so was. You know, it changed everything. Like, the other day, I got this credit card application, and I was pre-approved. <laughs> huh? I've never been pre-approved for anything in my life. I'm sorry, man. Joey, honey, I don't know if this will mean anything to you, but you'll always be pre-approved with us. No, that means nothing to me. <laughs> People get fired left and right in this business. I already got you an audition for another world. All right. Cab driver number two? You're welcome. <laughs> but I was Dr. Drake Remore. How can I go from being a neurosurgeon to driving a cab? Things change. Roll with them. But this is a two-line part. It's like taking a step backwards. I'm not going to do this. Joey, I'm going to tell you the same thing I told Al Minza and his pyramid of dogs. <laughs> Take any 
job you can get and don't make on the floor. So it's a typical day at work. Come in putting my numbers and Big Al calls me into his office and tells me he wants to make me processing supervisor. That is ugly. So I quit. Why? 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 This was supposed to be a temp job. Yeah, Chandler, you've been there for five years. If I took this promotion, it would be like admitting that this is what I actually do. So was it a lot more money? It doesn't matter. I just don't want to be one of those guys that's in his office until 12 o'clock at night worrying about the weenus. <laughs> the, the weenus? Weekly estimated net usage systems. It's a processing term. Oh, that weenus. <laughs> so what are you going to do? I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know what I want to do. I just know I'm not going to figure it out working there. Oh, I have something you can do. I have this new massage client, Steve. Anyway, um, he's opening up a restaurant and he's looking for a head chef. Um, hi there. Hi. Oh yeah, no, I know, you're a chef. I know, and I thought of you first, but um, Chandler's the one who needs a job right now, so... Okay, so Rachel is interesting because she's really, there's a couple distinct points of unemployment for Rachel. The very beginning of the series is interesting because this is a good example of structural unemployment. At the very beginning of the series, Rachel has no idea what to do and discusses how she doesn't know of any, what her skills would translate into, into a particular job. And if you don't have the skills to translate into a particular job, that's a good example of what's thought of as structural unemployment. That there's jobs available, but you do not have the skills for those particular jobs. Um, that's a structural issue. It's considered structural unemployment. Now, later in the series, she gets fired after being caught interviewing for another position. Uh, it turns out, of course, that's a very brief time that she's not employed. But when she's unemployed here, that would be an example of frictional unemployment. Frictional unemployment, there are frictions in the labor market. Sometimes people quit jobs and then look for another job. Sometimes people get fired and then look for another job. Sometimes people jump onto the job market for the first time. You know, they graduate from school and they go on the job market and they're not employed yet. Those, those are certainly normal if, if the individuals have the skills for the jobs available. This is an example of frictional unemployment. So there are just simply frictions that prevent individuals and firms from instantaneously matching up. And, you know, the time spent searching for a job, when you know you have the skills to take a job, that time would be thought of as you're unemployed, but you're frictionally unemployed. Then there's, there's examples with Joey that are also pretty interesting here. So when Joey loses his job on the soap opera, then all of a sudden he's unemployed. Well, what is this classified as, right? He's got skills as an actor, but it's tough to get acting jobs. So in some ways you could almost think of this as frictional, right? There are some acting jobs. Another way you could think about this is being seasonally unemployed. Uh, there are certain seasons where people are employed or not employed. Being an actor, it's, it's not quite like that, but the frictions are so great sometimes for acting that you're unemployed for a longer period of time, which we see Joey off and on, that's the case uh, where it's, such a struggle to find particular jobs. He's unemployed for a significant amount of time. So really, that would be frictional, but it's the frictions are so much greater that you could almost argue that it's structural in that particular point in time. There's also the case of Chandler. So Chandler has a job and then he quits because he really hates what he's doing, he wants to get into something different. That would also be thought of as uh, frictional unemployment, right? Chandler has the skills for some of the jobs available, but wants to do something a little bit different and goes ahead and basically kind of puts in the time and effort to find 
what he thinks of as perfect job that's more in marketing and advertising. So kind of fascinating to think through that there's all of these different examples of unemployment. Now, the one that we don't talk about as much right now is cyclical unemployment. Uh, cyclical unemployment is when unemployment spikes because the economy has cycles. Sometimes we go into recessions. When we go into a recession, if people are unemployed because of the recession, that's thought of as cyclical unemployment. And we don't really see that as much in the series. We see more of frictional unemployment, structural unemployment for the characters in Friends. So this is certainly not all of the examples we see of individuals looking for jobs in Friends, but I think this gives you a good sense of the three main types of unemployment that economists talk about, structural unemployment, frictional unemployment, and cyclical unemployment. Hope you enjoyed this video. This is part of a series, so if you like and subscribe, you'll get notified when the next Economic Lessons from Friends video comes out. My name is Matt Rosu. I'm Dean of the Sigmund Y School of Business at Susquehanna University. I'm also a professor of economics and look forward to seeing you in the next video.